Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. Hey Cape Artists and welcome back to the Heart of a Viking. In our episode this whole week we're focusing on food and art and what better way to focus on food today than pizza which is I know the very favorite of many of my HOV friends and many of my other friends that are out there in the world too. So today our focus is not only on pizza and how it looks and the textures of pizza but also on secret messages. So over the years many artists have hidden secret messages or symbols or little pictures or even words in artwork and it just takes a special person to be able to look at the work of art and figure out what the secret message was. So today you and I are going to put a little secret message in our slice of pizza. So stick around, let's learn a couple of cool fun facts about pizza because why not? I wonder if you know what America's favorite topping is on their pizzas. It might be your favorite topping too. And then we'll start our art project right after that with our secret hidden messages. So Let's grab our art supplies, our thinking cap, our creativity, and let's start right now. The origin of the word pizza is uncertain. The food was invented in Naples, Italy about 200 years ago. It's the name for a special type of flatbread made with a special type of dough. Pizza then enjoyed a second birth as it was taken to the United States later in the 19th century. How about some pizza fun facts? Every second, Americans order 350 slices of pizza. Across the United States, you can find over 70,000 pizza restaurants. On average, each American eats about 23 pounds of pizza a year. The most popular night for pizza is Saturday. The most popular pizza topping in the U.S. is pepperoni. And October is National Pizza Month in the U.S. One of the great things about art is that it's always open to interpretation. You can pour over your favorite painting again and again and still discover a symbol or a hidden detail. Some of the most famous artists in the world intentionally put secret messages in their paintings, whether they're challenging their audience or they are revealing something about themselves. Now, hundreds of years later, thanks to advancements in our technology, many of these secrets are first being discovered. When you first look at Jean Van Eyck's 1434 oil painting, the Arnold Fanini portrait, it seems to simply depict the merchant and his wife. But if you look closely in the mirror in the center of the room, you'll see there are two figures entering the room. It's widely believed that one of them is meant to be Jean Van Eyck himself. You also notice that there's a Latin inscription in a very elaborate style of writing on the wall above the mirror, which translates to, Jean Van Eyck was here, 1434. Very sneaky. So how about you? Are you up for the challenge of creating a secret message in your pizza slice today? Let's see what we need to get started. All right, so for today, we need a pencil, a pair of scissors, a glue stick, some crayons, you can have the wrappers on or off. I'm going to use my ones with the wrappers off. And then some colorful paper. You definitely need a white, um, but the other colors are all optional. Get as many as you can. And remember, if you don't have enough, you can always color white paper is the color that you need. And of course, you'll also be needing a piece of brown paper like this. This is actually from a lunch bag that I'm repurposing. It could also be a piece of cardboard. And the size is 100% up to you. Whatever size you want your final pizza to be, that's the size you start with. Okay, so I'm going to be cutting mine in half. This is a little bit too large, so I'm going to cut mine right at the center there. And then I'm going to make a triangle shape on the one half that I'm going to be using. I want my triangle to be pretty much symmetrical. That means the same on both sides. So I'm going to do a folding technique and do some double cutting so my triangle ends up being the same on both sides. So I'm going to put a little dot on the fold right there at the bottom and then a dot right up here at the top. I will connect those with a pretty straight line and then cut both sides of the paper at the same time to make a symmetrical triangle. Okay, so 
Okay, so now I'm going to use some of the scraps that came off to make a 3D crust at the top. So I'm measuring now how wide my triangle is and I'm cutting this little piece of scrap paper into a rectangle shape that's about as wide as my triangle. Now I'm going to fold it in thirds. That means I fold a little bit in and then a little bit from the top comes down as well and I'm going to glue that so it stays shut. Okay, and once I have that glued shut, I'm going to attach it to the top of my triangle. I like when it's a little bit puffier, so I'm going to put my pencil back inside to make it puffy and then stick it into the glue there. And then since I have another piece of scrap, I think I'm going to go ahead and make a second one and put it right beside the first one. So I have a nice fluffy crust. And then use that pencil whenever you need to to kind of poof it back up so it's nice and fluffy. We want it 3D, not flat. Now I'm going to use my red crayon to color most of the bottom half of the triangle here. This is going to be the sauce on your pizza. I'm going to go ahead and get out a piece of newspaper as well so that I don't end up coloring on my tabletop. All right, set this aside and we're ready for some toppings. I'm gonna start with my pepperonis. So pepperonis to me are reddish, but they're also kind of brownish too. So I'm going to use my red paper, but then I'm going to use my brown crayon on it. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut this part off. I want to make some smaller sized pepperonis. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my paper, there we go. And then I'm going to use my artist secret and my double cutting, but I'm actually quadruple cutting. I'm cutting four layers here. It just helps me get more pepperonis a little faster. You don't have to use that technique, but you can if you want. All right, and I'm going to use my black crayon to add a couple of the little dots that look like the seasoning that's in the pepperoni. And then of course, once you have those finished, you're going to go ahead and use your glue stick and glue them onto your pizza wherever you think you want them to be. And by the way, any of the toppings that I make, if you don't want to make them, you absolutely don't have to. I'm just choosing the ones that I think are most common and most popular on the kind of pizza that people like. All right, one of my favorites, olives are coming up. So to make the olives, I'm using a black piece of paper, and again, I'm doing some um, double cutting, but it's actually quadruple cutting, and I'm cutting out a circle shape to start with. I could just leave these as a circle shape, but I actually want them to look like they have the hole in the center like an olive. So I'm just cutting straight in and around and back to where I started to create this sort of circle shape. Practice and try this. I bet it's a technique that you might be able to use if you happen to have a hole puncher at home a hole puncher would come in handy here too and then of course glue them down as you finish all right, next I'm gonna make some pineapples. I'm actually gonna draw these first because they're kind of a unique shape here. So I'm drawing the shape of my pineapple first, then I'm going to go ahead and cut off a strip, and then I'll fold my paper so that I can do the quadruple cutting again too. And with my little pineapples, I'm gonna add some texture to them. Pineapple has sort of a stringy little bit of texture, so I'm using a little bit of brown to make that texture, and then of course I'll glue these down. All right, moving on to green peppers. Green peppers, I'm just going to cut a thinner strip off of my green paper, and this time I'm doing more than four folds, and then I'm just going to cut sort of a rounded line, almost like a rainbow, like an arc, and what's fun is some of my scraps that fall off also look like the shape that I'm cutting, so I actually end up with a lot more than what I had planned because my scraps look like the same shape that I was actually making, and then of course I'll glue these on too. All 
All right, cheese. Now, this is my favorite part, but it's also the messiest part. So I'm going to start with my white paper, and I'm cutting these little teeny tiny skinny slivers off of my paper. Then I'm going to stack them all up, and very carefully, because they tend to fly everywhere, and slowly I'm going to cut off these little teeny tiny pieces of confetti. No, that's not going to be confetti. That's going to be the cheese on my pizza. So I'm cutting off these little pieces go slow be careful because they do fly everywhere and please be considerate if you drop something make sure you pick it up okay now gluing these on is also a little bit of a challenge to glue them on I'm going to rub my glue stick on the sauce of course you can get some of the um, glue onto your toppings as well it just means there will be some cheese on your toppings which is perfectly normal on a real pizza anyway so why not then I'm going to gather up some of the uh, cheese on my in my fingers and sprinkle it on and then I'm going to shake my pizza gently and let some of it fall off because if it's not sticking to the glue now that means it's going to fall off later all over my floor so I'm going to go ahead and push it on yes some's going to stick to your fingers tap it off and I'm going to keep repeating this technique until I have cheese on my entire pizza as much or as little as I want and of course if you're like me and you find that you need more cheese looks like I did not cut enough then of course grab your paper back out and your scissors and slice up some more little pieces of confetti I mean cheese that would be perfect for your slice of pizza Ed in vece del fandango, una marcia per il fango, per montagni per valloni, con le nevi e salioni al concetto di tromboni. Okay, so now for the secret part. So while this slice of pizza looks lovely, it looks delicious, it has interesting textures, it was really fun to make, we also want it to be meaningful. So here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to select one of your toppings to write some adjectives on. Remember, an adjective is a describing word. I'm choosing my green peppers because I felt like I had a nice amount of them and they were big enough for me to write on. So I'm choosing my green peppers and what I'm doing is I'm searching myself for some positive words that describe me. So if you think you're funny, then that's one of the things you will write down. If you think that you're kind or thoughtful or caring or athletic or artistic or musical, whatever amazing words that you can think of that describe you, that's what I'd like for you to write on your one topping. So you're writing down positive words that describe you. And now here's the next challenge. When you're showing this piece of artwork to other people, see if they notice. And if they don't, invite them to look a little closer and tell them that, you know what, I did make this amazing piece of pizza, but I also put a secret message in that I'd like for you to try and discover too. You never know, you might be able to inspire someone else to think positively about themselves too. Well, here we have it, Cape Artists, our finished slice of pizza with a secret message. So I hope you've had a great time. I hope you had some fun with your collage. Remember, a collage is a piece of artwork where we cut and glue much more than drawing, coloring, painting, sculpting. It's mostly the cutting and the gluing. That's what a collage is. So I hope you had a great time collaging. And I can't wait until I learn your adjectives that you use to describe yourself. If you do put your art on Art Sonia in this part where it asks you to write an artist statement, that would be a fantastic place for you to put your adjectives so that I can see them too. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Can't wait to see your artwork, and I'll see you back here next time at the Heart of a Viking. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm.
Aguerrieri for Bacco, Grandus Dacis Tretto Sacco, Schioppo in spalla, Chapla Fianco, Collo Dritto, Uso Franco, Un Gran Casco, Un Gran Turbante, Molto Nor, Poco Cantante, Poco Cantante, Poco Cantante. Ed in vece del fandango, una marcia per il fango, per montagni, per valloni, con le nevi e salioni, al concetto di tromboni, di fanfate, di cannoni, che le porre tutti i toni, all'orecchio fa fischiar, non più vrai, quei penachini, non più vrai, Quel capello non più vrai, quella chioma non più vrai, quell'aria brillante. Non più vrai far colonia amoroso, notte giorno di torno gelato, delle belle tremando a riposo, ma ci setto a tutto d'amor, delle belle tremando a riposo. Narcisetto ad un cino d'amor Che rovino alla vittoria Alla gloria militar Che rovino alla vittoria Alla gloria militar Alla gloria militar Alla gloria militar 